I got a quiz question for all you anatomy nerds. What muscles bend the knee? If you said hamstrings, you're mostly correct. These are for sure the ones you feel during a knee flexion exercise at the gym. But there's a catch. The hamstrings are incapable of bending the knee if the knee is totally locked out straight. They depend on a tiny muscle called the popliteus to unlock the knee and let them take the joint through flexion. And the popliteus uses a little trick of kinesiology called the screw home mechanism, and it is fascinating to me. Today, I'm going to show you how it works. Hello and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Patrick, and this channel is all about anatomy and physiology. So to understand how this little muscle unlocks our knees, we need to know some of the more detailed structures of the knee joints. More specifically, the tibiofemoral joint, which is made of the tibia and the femur, because anatomists are boring when it comes to naming things. But we're more interested in the bumps at the end of each of these bones. At the end of the femur, we have two condyles that articulate with the tibia. This is a right femur, so this is the medial condyle, while this is the lateral condyle. Out on the sides are the epicondyles, and in the middle is the trochlear groove, or notch. It's a little groove for your kneecap to glide in. Those condyles of the femur sit nice into little discs of connective tissue called meniscus, or menisci for plural. For those of you who measure liquids in a lab, a meniscus in the knee is the same shape as the meniscus in a test tube. They sit on top of the tibia, or what we call the tibial plateau, and they share a lot of tissue overlap with the big cruciate ligaments, the ACL and the PCL. Inferior to the tibial plateau, the tibia has medial and lateral condyles as well. And that structure, two big condyles sitting in a little groove, creates something called a hinge joint, which means it only moves in one plane. It can extend thanks to the quadriceps anteriorly, and it can flex thanks to the hamstring group in the back. The quads group shares a common insertion on the tibial tuberosity, that big bump on the front of your tibia, but the hamstrings are more diverse. The biceps femoris is the most lateral and inserts on the fibular head. Meanwhile, the semimembranosus and semitendinosus insert on the medial condyle of the tibia after they pass behind the medial condyle of the femur. When the hamstrings work together, they pull the knee into flexion. Okay, so while we call the knee a hinge joint, it's quite a bit different to the hinge on a door. Instead of one static pivot point, the axis for the knee is actually in the middle of the femoral condyles. So during flexion and extension, the tibia has to slide back and forth on the condyles of the femur, which it does thanks to a little help from the cruciate ligaments. During extension, the PCL tightens and helps glide the tibia anteriorly. Likewise, during flexion, the ACL tightens and helps glide the tibia posteriorly. Now, here's the problem. The knee isn't a perfect symmetrical hinge, and that causes some weirdness at full knee extension. Specifically, it's those condyles that aren't perfectly even. The medial condyle of the femur is about half an inch longer than the lateral condyle. So while the tibia is sliding on the femur during the last 20 degrees of knee extension, the tibia externally rotates about 15 degrees, this direction, on the femur. This phenomenon is called the screw home mechanism. At the same time, this full knee extension is actually slightly hyperextended. So after we rotated our tibias into position, soft tissues like the cruciate and collateral ligaments are pulled taut, which makes the knee a little more stable. And when it comes to standing upright, that's a huge advantage. We can lock out our knees and rely on connective tissue instead of using energy through our muscles. Unfortunately, getting out of full knee extension presents a little bit of a problem. The hamstrings pull straight up. They don't insert at an angle that'll let them untwist a tibia that's been rotated by the screw home mechanism. And that's where the popliteus muscle comes in. This muscle originates on the lateral aspect of the femur and the upper part of the lateral meniscus and inserts on the medial proximal tibia. You see how it runs in this kind of diagonal path? Well, that'll allow it to internally rotate the tibia, unlocking the knee. The muscle has a twisty path of pull because its job is to untwist the tibia. But there's a big old caveat attached to all this, because how the popliteus moves the knee depends on whether the foot is on the ground or not. If the foot is on the ground, the tibia is stable and it's what's called a closed chain movement. These are things like squats or deadlifts or lunges. But if the foot is off the ground, the femur is now the more stable part of the joint, and you're performing what's called an open chain movement. This would be something like a hamstring curl on a machine. In a closed chain movement, the popliteus will contract and externally rotate the femur to unlock the knee. But when you lift your leg off the ground into an open chain movement, the popliteus will internally rotate the tibia to unlock the knee, then the hamstrings can follow through after that. So let's do a high level recap. 
The screw home mechanism is an external rotation of the tibia during terminal knee extension that happens thanks to the uneven bumps at the end of the human femur. But what's the big deal? Why does any of this matter? It matters because the ability to completely extend our knees is crucial for day-to-day -day activities. If we couldn't get into full knee extension, we wouldn't be able to stand for a long period of time and walking would be a lot harder. So folks in physical therapy and orthopedics spend a lot of time focusing on that specific range of motion, terminal knee extension. They're not necessarily trying to rehabilitate the popliteus muscle, but because they're working in the last few degrees of knee extension, they need to know that the tibia is going to twist a little bit. It's all part of the puzzle they have to solve in the rehabilitation journey. I hope you learned something today. If you did, consider liking the video and telling me more about yourself in the comments. Are you a student who needs a little bit more help? Are you a patient who's learning a little extra outside the clinic? Who are you people? Otherwise, thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Have fun, be good. Thanks for watching.